Ali, Bumbaye, Ali, Bumbaye. I know you guys are excited to see us. It's your favorite trio from Come On Now podcast. My name is Donald, your host, Don. For some of you guys who are more familiar with the show slash moderator, uh, not to be confused with Don King, my hair is a lot more lavish. I'll be seeing Renee at 10.30 a.m. So next week, you guys are going to be seeing me a lot more handsome. Uh, the guys uh, had some jokes for me last night as we partaked in the extracurricular activity last night and we were bowling. We're not going to discuss stores, uh, scores, I mean, uh, uh, because that doesn't matter. I lost, um, but we're not going to get into all that. I'm going to allow my uh, co-hosts and my comrades, partners of the show, to introduce themselves. I guess it's back to me. This is Nick Taylor coming in live again. Uh, former CFL three-time champion, D1 basketball player, NFL football player, um, the world's fastest person um, behind nobody. Usain Bolt is second to me. Um, we're here. Another live show we're going to have today. Me, Rudy, Donald, bring it on. Or should I say, come on now. My name is Rudy Rodriguez Shomat. Um, I am the bowling champion from last night. I bowled a whopping 145, and I can't lie, that was actually the best game I've ever bowled in my life. <laughs> That's how bad of a bowler I am. But yeah, I took home the belt last night. I was sweating profusely. Um, but yeah, I, I was a Knicks AAU travel coach. I uh, covered uh, college and high school sports for upwards of 15 years. Covered the University of Miami for over 10 with InsideTheU.com. Was one of the founders of that website, and uh, here to talk some stuff tonight. <laughs> Just when you think there's not a lot of stuff popping off, the, the sports world never lets you down. <laughs> okay, your moderator Don is here back, guys. So this is going to be a tight ship. I know you guys are looking forward to structure again. It was anarchy last week, but we're not going to get into that. We're going to just dive into our first first topic of the day. You guys might have seen it on Elon Musk's Twitter. Uh, now X, you might have seen it on Facebook, the Instagrams, or any one of these social media platforms that you have a profile with. Uh, Cam Newton, seven on seven scuffle. What do you guys think? What are your thoughts? Go ahead, Rudy. Well, um, initially when I saw it, um, I, I will be completely transparent. Am I a big Cam Newton fan? No. So I'm, but I'm just putting it out there. At first, when I saw it. I was like, this dude is being jumped by a bunch of people. He's not throwing a punch at anybody and just tossing them off of him like they're ragdolls. Now, I mean, people should recognize that Cam Newton is like 6'6 and 260 and built like a sculpture. And he made a living um, dragging 300-pound defensive linemen on him. Um, but, uh, yeah, when I first saw it, I was like, this is crazy. Like, I, 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 what would possess this? What would make this happen? And initially I thought, yeah, like they're jumping, they're, they, they've jumped this dude at a seven on seven. And then you find out more <laughs> and you find out it's in the USA today that uh, Cam Newton has a big mouth <laughs> and big mouths, you know, don't, uh, can piss people off. And he, um, apparently at this seven on seven, he worked with these guys. They used to work for his team. And they all have. They, they're, this, there's a backstory to it. It's not just that the random dudes just decided to jump Cam Newton. They worked for him, and he was yakking pretty much all weekend at them. And of course, they're chirping back as well. But um, Cam Newton does what Cam Newton wants to do, and he starts yelling at them from the from the stairs. That this is what I read that was reported in USA Today. Starts yelling at them from the stairs that. It's tough to be my son. I know. I raised you. And he's doing that while they're playing. And they actually left the field while they were playing in their game. Went up to there. Went up there. And he grabbed one of them by the jacket and was trying to choke him. And, the, and these are brothers, by the way. Some guy, a guy named TJ Brown and Stefan Brown. They're actually brothers. And grabbed the one brother. The other one came from behind. And that's what you see going off there the behavior is completely unacceptable you from the from the two brothers um uh, and it's from the they're from the top shelf performance program it's unacceptable i don't care what the man says you cannot react that way you cannot respond that way if you want to deal with it in a parking lot after the game you go ahead and do that 
But to do that at an event, and by the way, this was a seven on seven for kids that were under 12 years of age. Like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> and this is not like, what are we doing? These are children. These are kids out here. This isn't like 17, 18 year old kids. These are actually little kids. And this is the example that you guys are setting for these children. You know, this isn't new though for Cam Newton because he had an incident with the South Florida Express on January 27th, where he got into it with one of the South Florida Express um, administrators. Um, you know, so he is, and then there's other videos of where you see him yakking back and forth with players. There's some play, kids that just, there are kids that, you know, act like complete shitheads and they're saying stuff to him that, you know, they should, they shouldn't be saying, you know, when they were mocking him cause he was a free agent and so forth, but he's getting into it with kids. Like, what, like, bro, you have to learn to behave yourself, act like an adult. This is probably why he's not in the NFL anymore because he has no concept of actually leadership and his behavior, you know, he, he, he's best that his, be, he's better off just funding a team and letting someone else coaching and shutting the hell up. But that's not his style. He has to wear his ridiculous hat with his hair. Like, by the way, the hat never moved while this was going on, which was rather remarkable. Um, <laughs> that was crazy in itself. Like they didn't, I mean, my God, I'd at least try to grab his hat. Um, <laughs> But it's unacceptable, and this is part of the problem with seven on seven across the board. This behavior happens at every seven on seven event that you can hear of. The kids, act, the, the players act like shitheads. The coaches act like shitheads because most of these guys are not really coaches. They're a bunch of street agent handlers who are trying to drive these players to different schools. They promise the mothers of these of these children that they're going to go X Y Z, help them with scholarships. When the reality is, most of these coaches are trying to tap that ass. Um, which you know happens all the time. They're trying to tap. If they can't tap, they'll find the next mama that they can tap who has a great star athlete, who, you know, who's got no presence in the family. So it's 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 unfortunate and it's embarrassing, but it's not surprising. Uh, yeah, it was crazy, man. It was just crazy to look at, man. I wasn't even paying attention to it. I was just like minding my business. Everybody was like, man, y'all see what happened to Cam? I'm like, no. And then it popped up. And then I, you know, I'm like, damn, Cam really drug him. So for his career, he has 1,118 carries. Let's add a one to that. He has 1,119 carries and 5,800 yards now because he literally dragged them everywhere he wanted to go. It, this way, that way. He took him here, he took him there. But what, what Martin Moore said, I take him there, I take him there. And that's what he did. You know what I mean? It was crazy to see, but just like Rudy said, man, the 707 culture is crazy nowadays. Kids are rude nowadays. It's just, and the coaches are terrible. A lot of them, like Rudy said, haven't been on this platform of coaching, so they just got picked up and, you know, they this is their next ticket to, you know, feel like they've done something. There are some generally good people that actually generally have their heart into this. There are a lot of people that's just, some hood people that just, you know, getting into the, to seven on seven or optimist football is way worse. They bet out there, they shoot out there. It's people are dying out there just for little league kids out there running around playing football. I mean, it's not even they don't even have pads on on seven on seven, but they take it so serious. It's just the culture that we're we're in right now, and that's what goes down. Um, for Cam, he has to be better than that man. He's a role model. People look up to him. He has his podcast and it's doing well. But to act like that in that, that scenario is just totally uncalled for. And just like Rudy said, even if he's talking shit, you just have to take it, man. That's just what goes on. If you can't take somebody talking shit to you, you shouldn't be out there coaching. Because I know I chirp. That's, that's a big part of me. I like to get under people's skin. Um, and that's going to help me win. And, and if I win, I'm definitely talking more shit. You should have never lost. Not my fault. Get better. And um, so I'm not really mad at Cam chirping and talking shit. I think other people have to handle it better. Just from my just from my perspective of it, I, just like the unwritten rule of, in the NBA, when a team is up and the shot clock is running out and somebody shoot the ball, like what's the problem with that? Like everybody has these rules and you can't be chimed at, you can't be picked on. Like y'all are grown, man. Handle yourself in the situation better. I think there's. I think the one problem that comes into play with with Cam is that 
he has to remember that he is a target. Okay. And he's very and polarizing. He, he's a polarizing right. character that a lot of people cannot stand. And he has to he and his beha- he's only what 35, uh, 34, 35. He's 34, 34 years old. So he still you know, is, is a very athletic man who can oh, like, physically in his, in his prime but, physically. But but it's just like, bro, you're you're there are people that just cannot stand him because of how he is. And how he carries himself. You know that. And there are people that love him, and, and people that love him and don't care. Like they're, you know, he's one of those guys where it's like, I mean, I almost want to compare him to LeBron. LeBron, you either love him or you hate him. There's no in between. There's typically not. Well, I just, I'm, I'm neutral. No, you either dislike him or you like him. It's one of the two. Um, and but bro, you've got money. If you get in a fight with someone, and you hurt them, you have a problem, bro. This isn't like. You're not kids. You're not 16 years old. Well, a lot of people, a lot of people start with people that have money just to get yeah, their money. But like, remember, I, I'll take sorry. the hit. A lot of people, yeah. I'll take the hit. Like, hit me. Yeah, yeah I would too. Um, but remember, Akib Talib's brother shot a guy and, and killed the coach on the field. So over a fucking little league game. They they're so invested it's into this ridiculous. nowadays. Ridiculous. They're so invested. He's in prison man. for the rest of his life. I'm not going to prison over no little Fuck league that. game. No reason to. It's ridiculous. You know, but that's all I got. I just, I mean, this seven on seven shit. I, I think it's the destruction of football. I've always thought that. But that's it's what not the, real. It's that, not real football. That's where football is going nowadays. That's where mm-hmm. it's pushing to, where it's not really much tackling as, as it used to be. And but seven on seven is a major thing. That's what. That's what. Mm-hmm. It's, like people are getting ranked from seven on seven. It's like, mm-hmm. and they play year round nowadays. So, mm-hmm. and a lot of these kids are god awful. They shouldn't even be playing seven on seven. They should be out there training and working on their game individually they should be doing back pedal and, and t-steps and they should be working on getting in and out their breaks as receivers and quarterbacks should be working with receivers and doing routes and throwing it on time rather than just always in competition sometimes you have to sit back and actually hone your skills not just play mm-hmm. games all the time it is good to do it but you have to hone your skills that's why sometimes it look like sports is falling off sometimes just because people they got to work on their game Absolutely. It makes a lot of sense, I think, with uh, the huge investment that a Under Armour would make in a 7-on-7. People don't realize that Under Armours are behind a lot of these programs. Uh, overtime OTE sponsors Cam Newton's tournament. So when you realize a lot of the top-tier recruiting for college football is coming directly from 7-on-7, there's more to be invested. But with that being said, we have a live guests we're super excited because he is our first guest ever on the come on now podcast we've been a huge fan of his work with riot comedy and i would love to introduce mr dylan hudson from riot comedy what's happening Uh, y'all how y'all doing today we're good We're we're doing great dylan we are excited to have you here you're our first guest for our new podcast and we love it we love that you're here you know, you're part of the ball head community like myself. I know I hey, saw your pic- <laughs> you know? I'm not personally shaped right now, though. That's why I got the stocking cap on. I got a little fuzz, so I have the stocking cap on. Uh, but, you know, thank you uh, for, you know, thank you for what you've done in, in, po- in reposting our stuff when you did. Um, that's huge for us as we are new. And I know, you know, I have I became, I know, I, I, I learned about you guys Last uh, spring during the playoffs, watching these different basketball videos, Jimmy the Butler is that. So whose voice is that? Can't hear you. You're muted. Hit it. Can you unmute him, Donald? Let me try. Give me one yeah, second. there we okay. go. We good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So who is Jimmy the Butler? So Jimmy the Butler is actually my brother. My brother Trent. He was supposed to come on too. Um, it was going to be a couple of us jump on. But we were working on the episode for tomorrow, and it's not coming out as smoothly as we want it to. So they fell back and were like, yo, I'm just going to stay back, try to bang this episode out, and you just go hold it down for Riot Comedy. So I'm holding it down for, for the squad. Okay. Definitely, definitely. We appreciate it. You know, I, I, you know, I did some research and I learned that you guys have been doing this for a while now. You know, like Comedy Central, 
Um, I saw that your brother was doing this and then he called you he says you're a self taught artist. Damn. Talk about how like, I, like how you got into right. this. Where you get all that info from? Who you talking to? There was an article I, I read on, I think it was Voya or something like that. Oh, okay. Um, from like 2019. <laughs> yeah, so basically how it started was, this was like back in shit, 20, 2015 or something. Um, my brother was living in San Diego at the time and he was a financial advisor and he was just fucking miserable. He didn't like his job. And he just called me one day and was like, yo, like, I hate my fucking job. Like, we should make cartoons. And I was basically just like bet let's do it because i had talked about it at one point a couple of my other brothers had talked about it at one point and like that's my spirit man like you you throw something fun at me like let's go after it. let's go try it because before that i was actually doing music my brother uh he was a uh, rapper and i was making beats so we were like releasing albums together all the time so i've always been in that creative spirit just chase after the dreams and then he said let's make cartoons i was like fuck it let's go um so we just like taught ourselves how to do it all taught ourselves how to animate how to write draw the characters, all that shit. And when we first got started, I couldn't draw at all. Like people always tell me, they're like, man, you got God given talent to draw. Like you're so lucky. I'm like, nah, man, you should have seen my drawings at the beginning. Like I used to sit there for <laughs> hours and watch YouTube videos on how to draw cartoon characters. And this was never, I was like 20, 21 at the time. So I was starting from nothing. And if you, if you watch the first videos we ever made, if anybody wants to see, you can search the lounge on YouTube, mm -hmm. the lounge cartoon, it's fucking trash, but that was <laughs> we ever made but i mean it was good enough to, to where comedy central found it like we made we made that show and we put out we were putting out two episodes a week at that time and comedy central found it we're like yo you guys have mad potential we like what you all are doing let's meet so we flew out to la and met with comedy central they liked us and then we signed a deal with them and developed the show for two years but the show didn't make it to television uh we just did like 20 shorts with them online through their through their website and then we took a, a pitch meeting with them to try to get the show on TV and we fucking bombed our pitch as bad as you can bomb a pitch <laughs> and fucking do it. So that, that's, that's that story. And then after we blew that pitch, we were like, fuck, like, what do we do now? Like, we still want to make cartoons. And this was in like, I think 2018 at this point. So then we just came up with an idea like, all right, we got to go start making content again, go online, put it wherever we can, get our following up, get our buzz up so that we can at least get meetings again. Cause nobody would even take a meeting with us. We didn't have an agent. We didn't have a manager. Nobody was rocking with us. So that's when we launched the NBA cartoon was in 2018. And we did it for mm -hmm. the 2018, 2019 NBA season. And back then we were only releasing like one episode a week at that point. And it was like a minute long. Um, and we were partnered up with balls life at the time. So we grew our following decently over the course of the NBA season. I think we hit like 55,000 followers over the course of that NBA season. Wow crazy but we were doing decent numbers we had a little bit of a following so then people started to take meetings with us again so we took a step back from the nba cartoons again and we're like because to be honest like our, our our goal the entire time and our dream was we want to sell a tv show and have a show on on tv like we would be like seth mcfarland trey parker matt groaning like all these people so we took a break from the nba cartoon for like shit, almost two years where we were just making original shows putting together treatments pilots taking pitches with all these networks and we we shopped a bunch of shows for like two years and the networks still they were they were not fucking with us <laughs> so in october of 2022 my brother's not finally said man fuck all this like fuck the networks fuck the studios fuck the production companies we're not taking any meetings again for till further notice no more meetings if anyone calls us don't answer it if they email us don't answer it we're not reaching out fuck them all and we got really really serious about being independent and so from then on out, from October 2022 up until today, um, we just fucking completely exploded. We went, we started doing the NBA cartoon again. We did the NFL cartoon and we're releasing five to seven episodes a week. We gained over 800,000 followers since then, uh, doing like 8 million views a week. And what's funny is now a lot of these people are starting to come back to us now and are like, hey, we'd love to hear what y'all have going on. Like, what's new with you guys? It's like. I mean, where was that energy fucking a year and a half ago whenever I was pitching y'all shit? But, you know, we'll take their meetings. We'll listen, see if they got got a little bag for us. But, yeah, we're, we're talking to a couple of people right now, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, we'll drop the announcements if, if everything works out. And if it doesn't, like, we're not tripping on any of them, man. Like, fuck it at this point. We're doing great without them. They need to cut the check if that's the case. Now they got to bring a bag of money, a Brinks truck. <laughs> 
Okay, they got to come real right. I mean, there was a, there was a company that came to us. I'll say this. I'm not going to say who the company yeah. was, but there was a company that came to us and wanted us to make a show for them. And it was a digital show, and we didn't want to do it at all. We were like, man, fuck, that's just going to take time away from what we're doing. I don't want to fuck with these people. Yeah. And they were basically like, we'll give you all no notes. You can do whatever you want. We'll just distribute it. You guys can be the ghosts behind it, and we'll give you – I mean, they threw us a number that we couldn't refuse. It wasn't like nothing <laughs> – crazy like we wasn't getting rich from it, but it was enough to where we were like damn that much okay. money for a fucking yeah. second video <laughs> okay okay we can make that for you okay um but then we started butting heads with them creatively and oh. we was like fuck it fuck all this so who comes up with the ideas is it all three of y'all or you know what like, everyone, these, these characters are amazing you know from Nick, nikki the butcher you know bam is getting beaten up hanging out of a helicopter you know, with with J with Jimmy the Butler and gosh, uh, the the, the VJJ twins, Jason Tatum and Jalen yeah. Brown. You can see I watch everything. So, right. so I, I want to say this real quick. I don't think my microphone is working. I think my computer mic is doing it. Hear you though. Is yeah, there a way yeah, that y'all yeah, can? You can hear me fine. Yeah, we, we hear you good. fine. Yeah. All right, fuck it. Um. All right, so these characters, like, in, in every episode idea, like, it's it's completely random who comes up with it, like. Sometimes it's, you know, my brother Trent, my brother Devin. Sometimes it's me. We have a group chain, a group chat going in our text messages that's literally just going all day, every day, just throwing ideas out. What are we doing today? Did you see this in the news? What can we do here? Who's got jokes for this episode? And it's just going all day, every day. And then at night is whenever we usually write the scripts. But as for the characters, like, I'm going to tell you a funny story about the Jimmy the Butler, how that came to be. This was fucking a crazy ass day. So... That game was happening at like four or five in the afternoon and we didn't have an episode. It's like, I think it's like one o'clock in the afternoon. Tip off is at four o'clock in the afternoon or five o'clock. Let's call it five o'clock. It's like one o'clock in the afternoon. We don't even have an idea. Actually, we, we had an idea. We, we had this idea where we want, no one's ever heard this actually. We had an idea where it was the Celtics and the Heat they were playing and uh, we wanted to do, we wanted to center around Big Face Coffee. And the reason why Jimmy Butler was so good was because he was drinking Big Face Coffee. So we wanted to do like the SpongeBob, Mr. Krabs Plankton type of shit where the Celtics kept trying to steal a secret formula from Big Face Coffee from Jimmy Butler. So they harnessed the powers from it. And that was like an idea we were playing with. And then out of nowhere, we were like, Jimmy Butler, like, what if we just make him a butler and he's just serving everybody else? Like, and we were like, fuck fuck it, let's run with it. And so from a time period of like one o'clock in the afternoon to five o'clock in the afternoon, that episode got wrote, recorded, voice acted, animated, produced entirely and, and put out before tip off. And we didn't really have a plan on keeping him as Jimmy, the Butler, but the fans fell in love with it immediately. And we we're like, all right, he's Jimmy, the Butler. Now that's who he is. I mean, and yeah, Nick, Nick and I are diehard heat fans. You know, Donald is in his own little Chicago world. He's a Bulls fan. Uh -huh. Um, are, right. are you are you what, what sports teams do you guys like because i mean are you a heat fan or are you a, a lakers fan and you're from missouri right i am yeah so honestly okay. growing up in missouri i didn't have a team to root for whenever i was younger so i was just rooted for players so whenever i was young yeah. i was like a huge kobe fan which yeah. gave me a soft spot for the lakers so my favorite team as a kid growing up was like the lakers for a long time so i got a soft spot for them and i live in la now so go lakers but honestly man i just root for players at this point like I like, I'm a big fan of Giannis, Anthony Edwards, LeBron, Luca, Kyrie. Um, I, I just like to root for greatness. Whoever's next up to be great, that's that's who I root for. So I'm a big LeBron fan. Go LeBron. Uh, he's not going to get another ring. I've accepted that. So it's time for me to move on and, and accept next up. And next up is probably, I mean, we're looking, we did an episode on this the other day. Who's the next face of the NBA? Yes, I saw it. I saw it. You know, Anthony but, Edwards, I saw it. Who was it? Luca? No, I'm sorry. Uh, it, what was it? Uh, and uh, Nick, Nikki, the, Nikki the butcher doesn't want to do it. He likes to run horses and stuff. He don't talk for that shit. He don't care about that. <laughs> just a simple horse trainer. So but, we were just talking about before when you jumped on. We were talking about uh, Cam Newton. I saw the Cam Newton video today. <laughs> so, oh yeah. It, it, this is all on Brock Purdy then, basically, right? Brock Purdy is behind it. You can, that, that is fact. That is what happened in real life. I, my sources tell me, Ryan Comedy sources tell me that Brock Purdy is on the loose, peeing on people's faces, and set the hit on Cam Newton. Tell him you heard it from Riot Comedy. This oh, is we, we, we will. We will. <laughs> we just I had to spread rumors. I was, I was dying watching that today. 
How long does it take to make one of these videos? You said you just made one in three and a half, four hours. I mean, are you like, you're using computers to draw this stuff or you're you yeah, not writing yeah. it by hand, right? So honestly, man, like these things used to take us when we first started, I mean, to write an episode, record it, animate it, and do everything. I mean, it used to take us 12 to 15 hours to do one of these, but now we're so fast. We've been doing this shit for so long. Like we've made shit, man, probably 300 episodes of content now. That's all animated and shit, probably more than that. So we're, we're crazy fast. Now. I mean, there's times where we'll write a script in 10 minutes. And then there's times we write a script in three hours. And honestly, like what's crazy about that is the better the episode is, the more you enjoy it, chances are that that episode was wrote way faster than any other episode. Like that Cam Newton wow. episode came out hella fast. I think we wrote that in like 20 minutes. Um, but, but then we have other episodes that we're just like trying and trying and trying and trying to can't come up with shit. It takes us three hours. And, you know, that's one of them episodes that we just call this will do. This is going to have to do. It is what it is. But, you know, when you drop new episodes almost every day, like they can't all be masterpieces. Like as long as, yeah. you know, 49 out of 50 are good. I'm cool with that. I mean, we have a dud one out of 50 where we're just like, I'm not very happy with this one, but. Well, I never expected that OJ Simpson would have been in the demon side or the devil side for Patrick Mahomes. I thought it would be someone else. And everybody yeah, expected Tom... Eli Manning. <laughs> yeah. Cause he, I mean, well, he killed Tom Brady twice. <laughs> that was the thing, though, like, that was too easy. That's too simple. And we look at the comments and that was a big reason why we didn't want to do Eli Manning. Cause we dropped the episode as like a to be continued to go see the football devil. And I, I would say 90% of the comments were like, Oh, it's going to be Eli. I know it's Eli. It's Eli. And we don't want to do the obvious. So we were like, all right, curveball, boom, take this. And you know, it does make sense to be Eli, but it doesn't, it does in regards. Like he beat Tom Brady twice, but like Eli Manning, like he's just That's some boring. fucking He's a dumb idiot football player. Like he, he's not a fucking a devil. OJ Simpson, that's a devil. What we wanted to do, but I mean, it just it takes too much time to do all these things. We wanted to bring in Aaron Hernandez and have him be like OJ Simpson's sidekick, little gimp. That was like his like demon sidekick. But then it's like it's a whole thing. You got to get lines in for him. You got to fit them all onto the screen. So that's what we wanted to do. There's a lot of shit we really want to do, but we can't do it due to like. <laughs> timing getting the episode out and like framing like that's that's something yeah. a lot of people don't know was like because every episode is vertical so people yeah. are like why did you put this guy in it and this guy in it? it's like motherfucker how am i gonna fit 20 <laughs> people on the screen like i can't like i can fit four people that's how many people i can fit on the screen unless i pull the camera way out so we're really limited in a lot of aspects that people don't get I, so I got, uh I have you have uh let me one me i got a couple it. more uh, pat go ahead yeah let me get in no, here I'll I'll say no. go ahead doc the, the corporate side of me is automatic. I do advertising by day. I uh, work with a lot of different brands. You froze up, Donald. I think um, I lost you, Doug. Can you hear me now? Donald, you froze up. D, go back. Say it again, D. Re repeat it. Hello? Can you hear me now? Repeat, repeat it. it. Yeah. 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 Yes. So the corporate side of me, I'm, I do advertising by day. Sports brands. I do sports advertising. So every time I go through your videos, I'm like, what is the legalities from using some of these name, image, and likeness to some of these? Because, yeah, you guys are doing it very intelligently. You're tweaking names, but you're talking about NBA IP, which is humongous. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any legal battles that you have to face sometimes? Honestly, nobody has ever said anything to us. Like, the only thing anyone has ever said is they'll reach out like a player. Like, I'll, I'll say this, actually. This is a dope story right here um, for your all's fans. So... Have you all seen the Cool Boy and Jacuzzi episodes we do? Yes. I was going to ask are, you about that next. Yeah. These are by far the most disrespectful episodes that we have. By far. Like, it's not even close. Like we. Oh, we when, when he got the big, the big erection and it exploded. Yeah, man. Like, these dudes get roasted more than anybody in all of our cartoons. And Kyle Kuzma reached out to us actually to tell us. I got a DM from Kyle Kuzma's partner. And it said, hey, I work for Kyle Kuzma. He wants to have a word with you. And I'm like, fuck, we're about to get sued. And so I sat that DM. I was like, I shouldn't answer this. Like, I'm not fucking answering this. Fuck this. If I don't, if I don't answer them, they're gonna go away. And like 24 hours go by, my brothers and I talk about it. I'm like, fuck it, let's answer them. Like, worst thing that can happen, they'll tell us to stop. Like, mm -hmm. fuck it, we'll just make an episode making fun of them for trying to sue us. Who cares? And they fucking reached out. And we're like, yo, Kyle Kuzma is a huge fan of your all's work. Like, he likes what you all are doing, and he would be interested in potentially working with y'all in the future. Because that's I, awesome. I, I'll, I'll stop it there because I don't know what I am allowed to say and what I'm not allowed to oh, say. That's awesome. Yeah. Like his uh, business ventures yeah. and things. But, yeah, I mean, he came out and was like, yo, I like what y'all are doing. So 
But yeah, no one's ever said anything. Um, we're protected pretty heavily because our company is based in California, though, and we have parity law to protect us. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, if somebody wants to come through and, you know, who's got a lot of power and money, you know, let's say like a LeBron James, like this dude is the face of the NBA, most powerful athlete on earth, arguably. He got endless money. If he wants to shut us down, like LeBron James can shut us down. He can make a phone call and say, turn off their account, suppress it, shadow ban it. But I mean, nobody's tripping on it. Apparently, most of the players like it. We get a lot of likes and follows from them. They DM us sometimes. We've worked with some players. Um, we had a player from the Knicks reach out last year, tell us how funny he thought it was and that he wanted to be in an episode. And this was right in the middle of the playoffs. So I'm like, man. While the, aren't you while busy? the heat is kicking their ass? <laughs> <laughs> nah. Ain't you busy? Don't you have some First shit round. to do? First round. But yeah, um, no, nobody says anything. And uh, I, I talked to somebody who – has a very close relationship with the NBA Players Association and the NBA. And, you know, I had told him, like, I'm, I'm worried we're going to get shut down one day. And he basically told me, like, the NBA is not going to shut you guys down. Like, you guys are good for the NBA. You bring a lot of eyeballs to it, a lot of attention to it. Like, we're giving them free publicity. And, you know, last year during the playoffs, we, whenever it was the Heat versus the Nuggets, a lot of people weren't excited about that series. Like, the ratings were a little bit down, but – we're gen we're still generating eight million views a week off of this finals that is Nuggets and Heat, and if you look at the comments, people are like, oh man, like I didn't even care about this series until y'all started making this. Oh, like I can't wait for the next episode. Can't wait to watch the game to see what you guys are going to do next. So, in the end, we are really good for the league, and so, they don't want to shut that down. Yeah. So we have the Council of Jimmies. Let's talk <laughs> about it. Let's get into it. I love. I just saw that. Now you have the the homeless Jimmy and the Mexican Jimmy. Homeless Jimmy was a low blow, but we had to do it. I love. I mean, I love them. I think they're hilarious. So you have the Council of Jimmies now. So I I don't know where, where did you come up with the new one. I mean, how do you just come up with these? I mean, they're great ideas to me. I mean, so sitting here like I'm wait. I'm watching this like wow. This is absolutely hysterical. I can't. And then, so you honestly, know, dog, like the more you do this shit, the easier it comes. It's just like anything else. Like, like you literally work out your creativity muscle in your brain. Like whatever you yeah. do, it just becomes easier. And sometimes we, the, the ideas literally just come to you like an epiphany. You just be in the middle of a fucking workout or taking a shower or whatever it is. And you're just like, oh shit, where the fuck did that idea come from? That's amazing. Yeah. Or sometimes you sit there and you, you fucking think and think and think for two hours. And then you're finally like, ah, boom. Okay. There's the idea. You know, I don't know if you saw today's episode yet. Y'all been pretty busy with the, the podcast, but we did an episode today where the Clippers are suing the Lakers. I didn't uh, see that one yet, no. Okay, so they're, they're taking the Lakers to court and fighting them over custody of the Los Angeles fan base because the Lakers don't deserve them anymore because the Clippers are way better. And this was an episode that, like, we were working on this last night and we could not get shit out. We talked and talked and talked for two hours on what to do. And then finally, my brother Devin was like, what if we just take him to court? And I'm like, oh, shit, okay, that's an idea right there. Now let's start running with this. And then it came out. And then, you know, the Council of Jimmys, for example, Jimmy Butler, I mean, we already have multiple Jimmy characters. We had the Karen Jimmy. We had an emo Jimmy. We had regular Jimmy. We had the Butler. And we're like, man. And then I saw he was dropping a country music album. And I was like, I was like, how many fucking egos does this guy have? <laughs> I texted my brothers, and I was like, yo, we should do an episode of Jimmy Butler. He's seeking help from Dr. Phil because he has like split personality disorder and he can't get it under control. And then my other brother was like, no, fuck that. Let's do the council of Jimmy's instead where they just like meet collectively together all the time. And I was like, Oh, yep. That's it. That's better than the Dr. Phil. And we're just going to keep running with it. Like, we don't know where we're going to go with it. And even when we did the first council of Jimmy's episode, we didn't plan on making a second one that quickly. We just had so much fun with it that we're like, all right, keep them coming. So we still got a lot of Jimmy's to explore. We still got to bring in Barista Jimmy. We got to bring in what other Jimmy's we got. And he's going to give us some more characters, too. Like, he's all over the place. People keep talking about bringing playoff Jimmy. You know? This, this I, 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 I love Jimmy Butler. We're Heat fan. You know, like I said, me and Nick, are, Nick, Nick and I are Heat fans. We're, we live in Miami. Jimmy Butler, dog. We Jimmy love Jimmy Butler. Butler. Jimmy Butler is one of my favorite players in the league. He's as real as they come. He's I, authentic. Absolutely. He's a fucking dog. Like, this motherfucker is a winner. And so people I, know that. I mean, people know that right now we're going to be a uh, playoff. Jimmy's coming to life right now, and, and well, the Heat are waking up. And I keep saying this, and people keep fucking telling me I'm crazy for this. I'm not picking them to come out of the East, but if the Heat were to come out of the East, like, don't be surprised. Like, don't I don't be wanna, shocked. I don't want to hear shit about like, no, like they're not doing it this year. Like they do this same shit every year. They start off slow, then get hot, and then they mm -hmm. come in 
to your arena, they punch you in your fucking face, and that's it. And then you can't respond to them. So uh, the only and, team, and, the only team that I think can beat the Heat like definitively, Celtics. Celtics. <sighs> no, man. No, I, it's I, the it's the Nuggets to me. It's, it's I, a size I, problem. I, we still. I we're thinking about the East. Or if, we're thinking if about we're the East. East. I mean, honestly, yeah. I don't know if anyone's like a definitive winner. Like, I, if if I if I have to put my money on it, I got bucks over them. Just it's probably a stupid pick, but I just I believe in Giannis that much. They're playing bad. They got Doc Rivers as a coach, so they're probably that's probably not a good pick. But I, I said this in a commentary that we did. It was like the first week of the NBA season or the second week, and I'm sticking by this pick and I'm gonna hold it down. The Boston Celtics, to me are not going to go to the finals and it's for the reason that they have one of the worst coaches in the NBA. I'll be on record and say it like I think Missoula is a terrible coach. If you ever watch the Celtics play basketball in the fourth quarter, it's the same mistake every single time. Missoula never calls timeouts because it looks like we he's know. afraid to have to make that call. Like if I call a timeout, then I got to draw something up yeah. and I got to fucking coach. I got to do my job. So all they do is play through it, play through it, let teams run back and the next thing you know, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are shooting three-pointer after three-pointer after three-pointer and just missing and missing and missing, and then they can't get their shit together. It's like the Thunder whenever they had Russ and KD. They did that same shit, and that's why they could never get over the hump and win a ring because every time in the fourth quarter, they didn't have any continuity. They didn't have any good plays that they could draw up. And the thing about the playoffs is that every game – is it's not the same as the regular season. Like, it's half-court basketball slowed down, and a lot of these games are close. And if you can't win close games, you can't win – playoff basketball and when you bump into a team like the heat the heat can close jimmy butler arguably the best closer in the nba like when you bump into a team like that you just you can't beat them so I, i'm counting them out i mean my pick right now I will go i'm gonna action. go, I'm gonna go ooh, man i'm going milwaukee probably not a good pick but i'm going with it man because i believe in Giannis that much and dame that much um and in the west i keep flip-flopping don't you do it. If 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 someone but, made me put my money on it, I'm going with it. Denver. Okay. I'm going Denver. Don't but say the other name. Don't say it. Don't say the Clippers. I keep saying the Clippers, <laughs> dog. I keep saying the Clippers. I I knew it. I had a freaking feeling, man. The only thing that's gonna stop this debate a few weeks ago. I think the Clippers can go to the finals too. Actually. And I said, the only thing that's gonna stop the Clippers is themselves, because at the end of the day, like Ice Cube says, Clippers gonna clip. Like that's just what it is. So you trust so, you trust Harden and Paul George and Kawhi knees? I don't it's trust strong. none of them. <laughs> I like how you said Kawhi's knees though, because like I do trust a healthy Kawhi, but he's never healthy. That's but if, if Kawhi does stay healthy, if he stays healthy, I got the Clippers. But nah, man, like I can't trust. I don't trust James Harden. I can't trust PG. Um, Russ is gonna be gonna be Russ. So that's you know what? I don't know. Good or bad, probably. That's a good Not thing. Good. You know why? Because he's going to play 100%. I ain't got to worry about his effort. He's going to come with it every night 100%. My, For sure. My, my thing, I got the Lakers the second team. I think in the seven-game series, they're the toughest team to, to beat in the seven-game series. Now, oh, to get into the playoffs is different. But when the game slows down in the playoffs and you got LeBron and AD combined with D'Angelo Russell's shooting when he wants to, with Austin Reeves playmaking and Rui Hachimura, you know, his versatility, I like them. Nick, I'm not mad at it. I'm not picking the Lakers. I'm not picking them either, but I said behind behind Denver, I have them. That that is the thing with the Lakers, though, man, is that when it comes down to a seven-game series and it's slowed down basketball and you have to win, like, they are very, very hard to beat. I know the in-season tournament, like, it it doesn't mean shit. Like, it's the in-season tournament, but – at the end of the day, every single team in the NBA wanted to win that bitch. Like, everyone was trying. Like, it was good basketball. Everyone was trying. That's and what all I it said. came down to was, like, this is a one-game series. And you just – it's. I mean, you, you can't beat LeBron if it's, if it's win or go home. You just can't still. This dude is pushing 40, and he's still that dude when it comes down to that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not mad at people still supporting the Lakers and thinking they're good, but I, I'm rocking all Denver. Right. I got one. I got one quick thing before we get you, you know, out of here or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. How do you feel about the Phoenix Suns? They have nobody talks about them being the top team in the West, and under the radar, no. they have been winning. No, no belief in them at all, and it's KD, for this reason. Booker. It's it's literally just this. 
he Bradley Beal's been hurt all season. So it's just it's not how the sport of basketball works. Like you can't you can't be missing players and battling injury the entire season and then just pick them up and drop them in right before the playoffs and win. It's just it's not how it works. They're very talented, but when they play a good team, Phoenix is not a good team. They have some good players, but they're not a good team. And when good players go up against good players that are on a good team, like a Denver or even the Clippers, like they're, they're not going to beat those teams. Like Stop saying the Clippers. I'm going to keep saying it. Go Clippers. I ain't even a Clippers fan like that. Like, honestly, I don't even like the Clippers. But I do like Kawhi, and I would like to see Russ get a ring. So I'm, I, they got my support right now. But the Clippers as a whole, as an organization, I'm not a Clipper fan. But so, Dylan, I, uh, you know, we appreciate it. Tell everyone where they can find Pool Boy and Jacuzzi, the Draymond Green from the Draymond Green Show, Jimmy the Butler, the NWO version up there of, uh, you know, King James and Anthony Davis and the Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum thing. I remember it was – that was them, right? Yeah. With, yeah, Drew, yeah, with, Drew, were, with Drew Holiday? With Drew Holiday? Yeah, yeah. Where can they find you? So y'all can check us out on any platform, social media platform, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, across the board. It's all the same. It's just at Riot Comedy. I've been shamelessly plugging it this whole time. So that's what it is, at Riot Comedy. And you can check us out on our website, riotcomedy.com, where we have some bonus episodes that are exclusive that are – too edgy and too raw for social media. So if y'all want to check that out, riotcomedy.com. Yeah, you need to subscribe to Riot Comedy on their website because I I do subscribe to it. And uh, the, the, the Pool Boy and Jacuzzi episodes mm-hmm. at the end with Ice Spice. Yeah, they're out of control. <laughs> awesome. Awesome <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Listen, uh, Dylan, before we get you out of here, I have to tell you my favorite episode. Uh, when yeah. John, Morant, John Morant became a nanny. Oh, my God. I was in stitches. Have you episode. seen the other John Morant episodes of Mobbing and Jopping with John? Ja whenever he does like the, uh, uh, he he does the uh, the infomercial for no, the I suppository toilet for Elon Musk. That's a must that watch. I'm gonna send it to y'all. I'm gonna I'm 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 watch it right right after this. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna send it to y'all for sure because it's fucking out of control. It's mad funny. All I know is like last year, I'm just chilling, you know, watching my games and things, and not. And Rudy just keeps sending me fucking riot comments. Like, what the fuck is this, Rudy? And and I'm and I and I watch it. I'm like, okay, I I can I can fuck with this. Just, I'm dealing with it. It's it's funny. It's pretty you. funny. Patrick- support for all. I, I see you all supporting us. I see you uh, promoting us through your your yeah. podcast. You subscribe. I, like, I appreciate I appreciate y'all a lot. And and let's do this again. Anytime y'all y'all want me to come through, let me Definitely. know. Um, I can bring my other brothers too. We can all come on at some point. They can come on sometime. So. You know, let's let's make this happen again. Playoff basketball. Thank you for Man, your time. Let's do it. Let's do it. Right. We thank you so much. We appreciate it, and um, we will have this up on Friday. So we will definitely send it over to you as well. You'll have. I want to stop. I'll share it to the fans for y'all. All right. Appreciate thank you, you man. man. We appreciate I'll you, man. Hop off. I'll talk to you soon. All right. All right. Thank you. We had Dylan Hudson, Riot Comedy. Thank you. Peace. Thank you, everyone, for participating in that colorful commentary. That was the Riot Comedy guys. Uh, they're pretty amazing. And I think we had a good first guest. What do you guys think? That was awesome. That was man. great. That was great. Loved yeah. it. Loved it. Felt, guest. felt like a journalist again. <laughs> <laughs> Got to ask some questions. Like, that story is amazing. I mean, to, to think that you can put all that together. I mean, you see these that videos quick. are unbelievable. That, that quick. That quick. Yeah. Three, four hours. God, it would take me three, four years. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm, not, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm not the tech person on this show because that should yeah, came yeah. out to next year. Fuck yeah, we'll, we'll, leave, we'll leave it up to me and Rudy for that. But with that yeah, being said, yeah, if we relied on you, Nick. We would never have anything we're posted. At least we, at least we yeah. know that. We're gonna, oh, we're, I know, we acknowledge. We're gonna we, keep we, this we going, guys. We're gonna keep this. Is there's no more anarchy? Don's back. All right. Um, with that being said, we're gonna dive right into one of our favorite sections of the show um let me throw in some colorful everyone's excited everyone's excited rudy let's go off with your rant what's going on this week what's going on colorful mind you know they always make it real easy for me at the last minute you know because i sometimes i'm coming i don't know what i'm gonna talk about and then they do it for me they make it easy first off real quick I wanted to give some love to my fraternity, Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Pledged me up on chapter in spring 1997. I'm going on 26 years on March 23rd. No, 26? 27. What the hell year are we in? 26 years. 27 years. Oh, my God. 27 years. 
So, blue fire to all my Sigma brothers around the world. LeBron James, baby, he always, he never lets me down. LeBron James never lets me down. You know, you saw what LeBron said this week, right, Nick? No, what did he say, Rudy? What did Nick, what did he say? <laughs> what did he say? So I already talked about his steroid situation, and that's what I forgot to actually ask Dylan was, you know, are they oh, going to make yeah. an episode on LeBron with Kevin Garnett <laughs> and so forth? Oh, but, that, um, that would get him shut down. That's the, that's the shutdown. <laughs> that's the <laughs> shutdown one, right? So – Let's see here. Kev, LeBron James has been telling the world for how many years how amazing his son is at basketball. And this week he deleted a couple of tweets or he posted a couple of tweets and then deleted them because he's a punk and does that punk type shit. If you're going to tweet it, eat it. You don't delete it. That's a good line. Tweet, you're gonna it, tweet, it, you, tweet huh? it, eat it. Tweet if you it, tweet it, it, you eat it. Because if it doesn't work out for you, you have to eat it. And, you know, so don't delete it. Be a man because you know what? People are watching you at all times, LeBron. So someone's going to screenshot that thing, and they do. He says, man, oh, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Can y'all please just let the kid be a kid and enjoy college basketball? The work and results will ultimately do the talking no matter what he decides to do. If you don't know, he doesn't care what a mock draft says. He just works. Earn, not given. He continued it up with them. Um, and to tell the other kids out there striving to be great, just keep your heads down, blinders on, and keep grinding. These mock drafts doesn't matter one bit. I promise you, only the work matters. Let's talk real basketball people. My guy, LeBron James, the only reason we talk about your son is because of you. You are the one that runs your mouth about him all the fucking time. You're the one that's been freaking pushing this narrative for years now. You're the one saying that you want to play with him in the NBA and you're not going to retire until you play with him to the point where teams are literally ready to fold. When I say fold, but like fold under the pressure of drafting him or signing him for the purposes of getting you for one. Maybe two years. I'll do it. You're, huh? I'll I know you. It. You're you're trying to hold people hostage to 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 basically embarrass themselves and embarrass the league. You sit here and say it's earned, not given. Shut the fuck up, then, because you're the one that's making it not earned. Because it's not earned. He's averaging less points a game than Nick did in college. Sorry, Nick. Was- but you were good. You were a starter. He's not starting. He's on a bad basketball team. That's true. He's averaging less than six points a game, shooting 27% from three, 37 from the field. Quite frankly, he is not a good basketball player right now. And I know he had a very scary medical situation, but that's not why he's not a good basketball player right now, because the reality was he was a good high school player. He was not a top 25 player. His ranking was based on LeBron pushing a narrative because LeBron pretty much owns McDonald's. He owns this. He owns that. And, I mean, how, Nick, be real. You know this answer. How many teams will have their third or fourth best player be ranked in the top 25 in the country? None. No. Unless your name is Bronny James. Mm-hmm. And, again, this is no shot at this kid because he's actually a good ball player. He's a good high school player. I like him. I mean, I, huh? I like his game. He's got skills, but he's a role – at best, he's a role player in the NBA in three years. He's not an NBA player right now. Do you think he could take Pat Beverly's lunch right now? Fuck no. And I don't like Pat Beverly. Hey, Pat, hey don't, don't you talk about Pat, would Pat eat, Beverly. Pat would, eat, Pat would eat him for breakfast. Josh Richardson would eat him for breakfast. This is a joke at this point. You push this narrative because guess what you said? I mean, you said this March 6th of 2023. I make notes. Man, Bronny definitely better than some of these cats I've been watching on League Pass today. Shit, light hit weight, hilarious. This is when he was in high school, he said this. This is when Bronny's team at Sierra Canyon couldn't even win their freaking sectional championship or whatever it is in California. They didn't even make it to the big dance in California because there's a different system there. I don't know if you're familiar with it. They have like an all-round state tournament, and then they have sectional type tournaments, you know, for whatever. And they got their asses kicked in that tournament. They lost like 10 games last year. But this kid's a top 25 player? Get the fuck out of here, man. 
Then on January, so this was last year when this kid's in high school that he's saying this. Let's be real. He's not going to make any McDonald's All-Americans game if his dad's not LeBron. Look at the guys like Carmelo. Carmelo's son is good as hell. Right? Yep. Scottie Pippen's son is good as hell. Scottie Pippen's son's the best player at Sierra Canyon right now. Good as hell. They're like 25 and 1, something like that. They're really damn good this year. You don't ever hear Scottie Pippen talking about his kid, Carmelo talking about his kid, all these different former pros who got top shelf dudes. You hear Carlos Boozer talking about Cameron Boozer and Caden Boozer? No, you don't hear it. The only person you always hear talking about their fucking son is LeBron. And I feel sorry at times for his son. I feel sorry for him. I feel sorry for him because he's not being allowed to mature. He's not, he wasn't allowed to be a kid. He wasn't allowed to be because his dad's been pushing his fucking narrative for years because this is his, this is LeBron's dream. Because you don't hear his mo the mother saying, you don't hear his mom saying this stuff. You hear dad, oh, I want him to play in the NBA with me. Okay. Well, what if he doesn't want to? What if he doesn't want? Do we even know? Because the kid never talks. This sounds like dad's dream. This is like my dad. My dad had a dream that I would be a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. But I do pretty goddamn well not being a lawyer. So on January 6th, he says he could play for us right now easy when he was talking to Austin Reeves which was overheard by many media members and been reported. So you have a guy who a month and a half ago was saying this, and now you're telling us to leave him alone? Motherfucker, you started this. You're the one that brought this shit on him. You're the one that brings the attention to him. So if you learn to shut the fuck up and close your pie hole, people will leave him alone. And guess what? The mock draft a year ago had him going in the lottery, which was outrageous. And the only reason was because of you. Because now they have him in the mock draft for 2025, which I still think is a reach. But let the guy, let the kid grow. If you want him to grow up and be a kid and enjoy college basketball, zip your fucking pie hole, bro. That's it. Well, uh, I respect it. Respect it. Nick, we're going to leave this one with no comments. It's a drop the mic moment for Rudy. We're gonna mm -hmm. let, I know you were ready, but we're going oh, to let it go. We have to listen. We had our guests. Things are right. going. Things are progressing. Nick knows it's true. He knows he agrees with me. Actually, this I time. understand that, Rudy. But we're at the fifty-two minute mark. And we're going to keep keep this thing rolling. Um, as we have uh going on right now, there's going to be um uh, probably the best part of the show. The best part of the show. I know you guys have been itching and waiting and just like oh boo hoo cry cry that you haven't had Don's dimes in your life. Um last couple of weeks so i'm gonna throw this in this one in uh today i saw a clip of dwayne wade's digital show podcast i'm not sure if you guys are familiar with dwayne wade's new digital show and he had um uh, chris paul on there cp3 who i'm a huge fan of and i think he has an amazing uh fashion sense i like the way he dresses but that's neither here nor there and uh they made a very cp3 and dwayne wade uh i guess at their attempt for shock value, uh, made a, a statement that I don't believe one, but it 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 inspired Don's dimes. He basically said that there was an opportunity for the big three to be LeBron, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Paul, but Chris Chris Paul couldn't agree on not having the number three. And I thought that was hilarious because I'm like, oh, you're you stopped your championship aspirations for a number. Okay, CP3. Okay, but that that brought on. My Don's Dines for you, Rudy and Nick. If you guys could have any whisper or hypothetical trade that was going on back then to happen, what would it be? And I'm going to give you some examples. I remember I'm talking first three OBJ years, best receiver we've ever seen. There were these whispers that Bill Belichick was going to trade for him. I thought, oh, my God, Tom Brady and OBJ. I saw what he did with Randy Moss. That's a hypothetical, right? Two, I'm a Bulls fan. This one almost came to life. Oh, man. Um, you took my... Let, let me finish. Let me finish. 2011. Derek Rose comes from back from his injury. Carmelo Anthony's up for free agency. Comes to Chicago. He chooses to go get the bag, whatever, Carmelo. 
That was a hypothetical one I really love. One of the most infamous ones, rest in peace, David Stern, uh, CP3 to the Lakers with prime Kobe. They shut that down. So if there's any one, and, and it could be one I, I, I didn't name, but if there was like this one possible, in any sport, by the way, in any sport, a hypothetical trade you heard about in the past that you, you could have made happen, what, which one would it be? Uh, let's see right here. Dame Lillard to the damn Heat. So I'm a Heat fan. Damn it, I said it. I wanted him bad. I would have gave up everybody on the damn roster for him. Right now, I look back, I'd probably say no. But, yeah, I wanted to see him with Bam, Jimmy, and I wanted him to see him with Duncan. I, that was, that's something I was literally hyped for. They, they presented it to us all off season that it was going to happen. Dame said, I'm going to Miami. That's the only place I want to be. And then right in my heart, he ended up in Milwaukee. And he, he still wants to be in Miami because he just told us the other day that he wants to play with Bam. Him and Bam are good friends. So that's a trade. I think from Don Dines, you just threw it at us like you had me thinking real quick. I would have loved to see that one. And another one. Oh, I know it's a big one. No, you can't have another one. You can't do two. Rudy, I listen to you. I ain't get one out yet. I listen to your pie hole. For all of this podcast. But if you take the one I'm looking at, then the shit, I got nothing. All right, go, go ahead. ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You can have it, you can have it, go ahead. Go Kobe ahead. Bryant to the Bulls. Oh, that, that's, that's where I thought Donald was going. That's Kobe where, Bryant to the Bulls. See, I didn't get a chance. To, I was, that was because I was going to give mine after that, you. So I was good. I was going to take yours. Well, you gave like three before that, I thought. <laughs> no, those were examples. So you guys knew where to go with the dimes. I was well, going to give mine. I remember when Kobe was crying about being traded. And mm-hmm. Kobe wanted to get traded because they weren't giving him the help. And the, I mean, the possibility of being traded to the Bulls for Luol Deng, Joachim, Joachim Noach, Ben Gordon, and Tyrus Thomas. It's not about who you're traded for. It's about where you're being traded to. And playing as basically a carbon copy of Michael Jordan and to go to the Bulls. That's crazy. That would have been fucking insane. I would go. That, that would, would have been insane. I would go and leave would, with that. That's crazy. Well, you should have you sort of started with that over the day. But, but I'm a Heat fan, so fucking I'm going to go about what my heart wants rather than what the NBA wants to see. What I, I, I wanted mean, to that, see is, I mean, yeah, I, I wanted to see what you wanted to see, but I'm just, I had to Google it real fast. <laughs> Okay, okay. I, I like that. The Kobe, Kobe to Chicago. I remember that was 2007. He was actually looking at houses in Chicago, by the way. That's how close he was to Probably sign. Probably was going to buy Michael Jordan's house, huh? Um, yeah, there was a lot going on. I'm going to give you guys minds. And this is a lot more recent. A lot of people don't know, before t- these two gentlemen signed one place, they were going to sign somewhere else. I would have loved to see Kyrie and KD sign with the Knicks. They were going to sign with the Knicks. They chose to go to Brooklyn. Uh, This was before Leon Rose was there. This this was when the Knicks were still kind of mismanaged. And KD recently said it on a show, one of his shows for the boardroom, that the Knicks weren't cool to play for at the time. Uh, They weren't a hot team. But we all know there's two IPs, two brands that move the needle in the, the NBA. It's the Lakers and the Knicks. And no matter what we think about Knicks fans, shout out to Boozer, our brother. It's exciting when they're good. Um, but they haven't been legitimately like lethal since the 90s. And my Bulls are kicking their ass. Um, I would have loved to see KD and Kyrie in the garden. I would have loved to see that. So that would you have know been why Kate, you're frozen. I, I, I can't hear anything. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Uh, you, you you know the problem with KD realistically. He's too soft. He couldn't go, if, if he had gone to the Knicks, they would have made him quit and pack his bags in 3 months. No way. Cuz he's just huh? No way. No way. It took him 3 years in Brooklyn. Brooklyn's not getting the same type of coverage that the New York Knicks are getting. Come on. But yeah. He would, he would he would have been whining so fast with the New York papers really railing on him if they're not doing well. Like, that guy's a crybaby. You know, he's just a massive crybaby. So, yeah, I would have loved to have seen it to see how he reacts. But I'm, I, I, in, my, in my mind, I think he's probably the one that stopped it. You'll never hear it. No but way. I think he probably stopped no way. it. Kyrie mm-hmm. definitely. 
Everybody. I think Kyrie's more. I think it was more of a Come Kyrie. On, Kyrie always ran the ship in the show. Kyrie, yeah, which, Katie, which means that Katie's not a leader, which we know that. But everybody, Katie's just gonna hoop. I don't have a problem point, with that. Another, another my problem human. with Kate. Go ahead, bro. My problem with my problem with KD is he let the media get into his head to leave Golden State. He would have been a top five player in the history. He would have had five championships right now. He played with Steph. He played with one of the best players. I don't care what nobody say. Every great team that won a championship, they won because they had great players. The Lakers had Magic, Kareem, Worthy, Byron. They had a plethora. They had a plethora of players. You had. You had the Bulls who had the best rebounder of all time, the Scottie yeah. Pippen. Like, every team wins like that. I don't think Golden State was that hyped up to be like everybody made them out to be. You had you had Steph, who was a top 10 player of all mm. time. You have Clay, who isn't a superstar. He's a star. He was a shooter. Couldn't put the ball down on the ground. And you have Draymond, who's a glorified role player. He's going to be in the Hall of Famer. But you a, see that? I, Rudy, I've been said he's a role player. Steph make all of these people. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame he's a role player. Uh, but that's what it is right now, just because, just like Dennis Rodman. We all, shouldn't have, be in the Hall of Fame either. We have to argue yeah. all the time that these players yeah. are not Hall of Fame players, but they were they were top role players on teams that won multiple championships, and they did such a certain thing good. But if you put them on a, on a fucking – the Sacramento Kings back then on a sorry team that they'll still average four points a game and eight assists. They'll be terrible. They're not superstars. They're not somebody. They're not better than Tracy McGrady. They're not better than Dwight Howard. But those they're they're going to be in the Hall of Fame because of who they were. But Draymond was a glorified role player. So they only had one superstar when he went and joined them, and then another star and a role player. But everybody made it seem like they joined a team that had ten freaking. <laughs> No, the problem was that he joined a team that had seventy three wins that he had just lost to, and they just lost them. And he kind of and and the attitude was like, "You just punked out of competing." And I got and look, my problem with him was that he let Draymond Green run him out for calling him a, calling him a bitch. Like you let that bother you so much that you left to go play in Brooklyn. I think it was multiple things, and, man. I and, think, and, and, I... Well, he and he's soft. That's what it is. He's soft, <laughs> and surviving the New York Knicks is hard. I, I think that he actually wasn't soft. I think he actually wanted to rewrite the narrative of that he had to win with a super team and he wanted to go out and kind of do it on his own, in his own little way, rather than doing it with the Golden State Warriors. So I don't think well, he was soft from that He's aspect. failed. He did fail, but I'm, he's failed I'm, from I'm not failed mad. and I'm, failed and failed and failed. Okay, but he did he did put himself out there in an unsoft way. Really. And now he's playing with two stars again, and he's failing. They traded. I mean, Brad Brad Beal's always hurt. They traded for but, him. He didn't make the trade. But he tor- he forced the trade. Come on, Bradley Beal made it. The, 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 the owner they got a, you know what the agent they had a whole little. Kevin thing Durant on. forced the trade. He wanted to go to a team that had players. No, I'm talking about. How they got Bradley Bill? I'm not talking about no, that. No, I'm talking about, but, but but he was involved in that. He, you think that he wasn't involved in in that trade? Like these guys? He, he, I mean, probably he okayed it, but I'm not saying that he went out there and pushed it to get Bradley Bill. Uh, well, he pushed it to get to Phoenix to play with Devin Booker. So I mean, you know, I don't think he would have survived the Knicks. But I'm sorry. Go ahead, Don. Yeah, Take I it away. But um, we're gonna wrap up Don's dimes. Uh, this one was, was was a fun one. I'd like to see you guys head spinning. Rudy, you gave me nostalgia, and you kind of broke my heart thinking about the Kobe to Chicago. I would have loved to see that. Um, and he would have picked number 24, like, at a, at a shot at Michael, which would have been so dope. But that being said, uh, we're going to get into uh, one of the new sections of the show that I really, really love. I think it's exciting uh, for all you gambling addicts out there. Don't take us too serious. We're coming in with Nick's picks. Nick, right. Nick. I'm coming yes. in hot. I'm coming in this hot this week. Just a two-teamer. We're going to college basketball on a Saturday. You know it's about to be March Madness, and teams are really gearing up to be really good, and they're trying to win. They're trying to position themselves to get a good seat. So I'm going with an upset Saturday, man. I got the Florida Gators over South Carolina. And the reason I'm picking them is because South Carolina has been kind of – little sluggish lately. They're 3-2 and two in their last five games, but they are playing at home, and I like the Gators. They've been playing well lately. I like Walter Clayton. He's a good player. He's a bona fide star. He scores about 17 a game. He's a hooper, and I just like a Gator to eat the game cocks. I don't... I don't did I, is, that, is that wrong? Did I... Is that... Is that what? I, what? I, I like the Gators to eat up the game cocks. <laughs> <Did> <laughs> What do the I, young people just, say? Pause. Right. 
Was that a pause moment? What? what the, I don't know. What the, you want you want the gator eat a cock? I mean, I don't know. I just don't see a game cock beating a gator. I, I mean, I'm just, I don't know. Y'all read it to it how y'all want to read it to it. But on, the, on this upset Saturday, we're still going with at home. I like Creighton over Marquette for the win. Both, I like both money line. That's just me personally. I'm putting a hot. I ain't going to tell you how much I'm putting on it. Just know that when I win this week, I'm going to come out here real lavish on the next episode. But those are my two teamers I'm going with. I'm going with... <laughs> I'm going with Creighton over Marquette. Creighton's playing at home. And I'm going with the Gators over the Gamecocks. Okay. And these well, are money line bets. These are to win, not not spread bets. Yeah, I'm just going for the win. I'm, I'm waiting okay. for the spread to drop. You know, they're still waiting for injuries and things of that nature. But pretty got a pretty good clue of who's playing and who's not playing. But I'm just going oh. with the money line. That if it does change before the game come up and I see a spread that's better. But I, I'm going with the upset, so it's probably better anyway. Okay. Well, everyone listening and watching, Nick's picks aren't the views of the Come On Now brand. We are not saying to go spend all your money and put all your money on these teams. These are simply Nick's picks. With that being said, we're going to be introducing a new segment to the show. It is called Combat Corner. And this week, it's going to be Rudy getting into all things UFC. I am a former boxer, so I'm going to be talking about things boxing. Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, there's a fight coming on. I'm going to be talking about that next week. Not today. We're going to leave Combat Corner up to Rudy because I didn't, unfortunately, have the time to watch UFC 299. Uh, well, that, actually, that's coming up at UFC Fight Night Mexico, actually. And um, even though I've spent a lot of time working with the UFC and some of their fighters, we'll talk about that down the line. But, Rudy, give us some of your thoughts on the UFC before we wrap up this show with Combat Corner. Let's go, man. This is, this is you know, topics near and dear to my heart because I love MMA. I actually love boxing, too. And I, you saw that Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney face-off yesterday, I'm sure. Yeah, I've seen it. Because they were going, I mean... They get so close. I think these guys want to kiss each other. It's, it gets a little bit weird at a certain point. It's going to be a good but fight. fight. It's going to be a fight. I can't wait for that. That fight, I would pay for that fight. That That's a fight I'd pay for. So we got a big one that's coming, that's coming up this week, um, next Saturday in Miami, which I will be at front and center because I cannot wait. I don't miss cards down here. UFC 299. You got Sugar Sean O'Malley and Cheeto Vera. Uh, O'Malley is the champion, and Cheeto Vera beat him the first time. O'Malley doesn't believe he lost because it was really to, to an injury. Um, but that's part of fighting. When you kick when you kick someone in the leg and they check your kick and your leg busts, yeah. Or if you turn your ankle, guess what? That's part of the fight game. Yeah, you know, that's ama- it doesn't matter how you win or how you lose, but it, it matters just that you win. You know, that's going to be a big fight. I mean, realistically, I'd be surprised if O'Malley lost this one because um, Vera really always looks for – you know, tries to finish people with one shot power. He's not really, he's not active enough to me. Um, and I think O'Malley's confidence is probably through the roof after beating Aljamain Sterling. But this card is stacked. I mean, people that don't know, Dustin Poirier's fighting Benoit Saint Denis. Big fight between Michael Venom Page and Kevin Holland. Now, this fight has absolutely zero implications for shit, other than these two dudes are gonna fight. If you've seen Michael Venom Page when he was in um, Bellator. That dude's a striker. Kevin Holland is allergic to wrestling. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about these two dudes looking for a a, 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 a single leg or, or looking to grapple or looking to do jiu-jitsu. These dudes are going to throw and throw and throw. You don't have to worry about that being Kamzat, Kamzat Chemayev domination of Kevin Holland because he wants to wrestle fuck him. This is going to be a fight. I can't wait for this fight, actually. Gilbert Burns Durinho. He, he trains down here. He's fighting Jack Della Madalena. It's going to be a hell of a hell of a scrap. And Peter Yang is Song Yadong. I mean, that, that Yang Yadong. Like, that, that's going to be a scrap, too. I mean, this card, a prelim fight is Curtis Blades against Jer- Jalton Almeida. Almeida could legitimately be the next title contender at heavyweight if he wins this fight. Overall, this card is sick. If you don't, if you like MMA, if you're an MMA guy, you need to be at this card because Dana White learned a decade plus ago when he brought some dog shit down here and no one went. He treated Miami like we were fucking Austin, Texas or Columbus, Ohio 
where there's not fuck all to do. You want to bring in that UFC card down here? You need to bring us an event. And they they figured that shit out last year when they brought us Israel Adesanya and Alex Pereira. Unbelievable card. It was packed to the gills. Masvidal fought Burns in that fight. No, yeah, Burns. He fought Burns in that fight. Um, was it Burns or was it wasn't? No, it was Colby. Was after that. He fought Burns. I mean, you you got a hell of. I mean, he they've learned. You bring us events. This is Super Bowl City. Should be All Star Game City. MMA, you bringing us cards. Now, UFC Fight Night Mexico last weekend, bro. <laughs> the main event of uh, Brandon Moreno and Brandon Royval. The winner is probably going to get a title shot, and Royval picked up the upset in a in a I believe it was a split split decision, where Moreno won his card forty nine forty six. Don't you love those, Donald? A 49-46 one way and then 48-47 the other way for two cards. Those are crazy to me. It's like, what was what was this one guy, what were these two guys watching that the other guy wasn't seeing? That's crazy. Because I thought Moreno won the fight. I thought he controlled the first two rounds. I thought he dominated round five, and yet he loses. The, and, and none of the cards matched, which made it crazy. The 48-47s did not match at all. They were all over the board. You know, so when you see stuff like that happen, it's disappointing because I was expecting to see Moreno fight um, Alexander Pantoja for a, was a fourth time. I think he's lost three times to him already and um, from the ultimate fighter. And then he lost another fight to him. But Roy Val just got the shit kicked out of him by Alexander Pantoja. So do I really want to see Alexander Pantoja fight Roy Val again? No, I like, I, like, I like Moreno. Moreno's a fun guy. He reminds me of McLovin from uh, Superbad. You know, now he's all tatted up. He used to look like a 12-year-old. Now he looks like he's been through some wars and shit like that. But um, that card was pretty damn freaking good. It, it was exciting to watch. You know, you go you go to these other countries where they're, you know, where you have Mexican fighters, for example, or when you go to Brazil and there's Brazilian fighters. Like, that shit, the excitement, the energy from those buildings. The, the co-main event between Yair Rodriguez and Brian Ortega, bro, that was a five-round fight. Yair Rodriguez comes out after Brian or Brian Ortega in the intro jumps in the air and comes down and rolls his ankle. And you're sitting here like, did he just fucking blow his ankle out <laughs> before the fight starts? And there was an interview after. He's like, I can't believe this is happening. I mean, and he was in pain. He hurt his ankle. Yair Rodriguez put him on his ass in the first round. He was beating the shit out of Ortega, whooping him, dominating him. And then Ortega kind of, you know, regained his composure. He survived. And um, second round, takes him down. He's in full mount for literally the entire round, just pounding on his ass. And uh, third round, right back to the same. I mean, Ortega, you know, as you know, Donald's a freaking jujitsu genius, you know, and he... I mean, he does things so quickly that other guys in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu just cannot do. And he get he takes him down. He manages to pull his, like, it wasn't even his back. It was like the side. He got him in, a, I don't even know what kind of choke you call it, because I'd never seen it before in an actual MMA fight, where he got him in this funky-ass sideways choke, choked him out, won the fight. And you know what? He's probably up next to fight... Uh, Ilya Taporia, if uh, Brian, if uh, Alexander Volkanovsky doesn't look for a rematch. So, yeah, I mean, big MMA fan here. I love boxing too, but make sure you get to UFC 299 because you, if you're in Miami and you're not at UFC 299, you're missing, you're missing fireworks. That's all awesome, I got. Guys, you heard it here from Rudy first with our first ever combat corner. We look forward to doing Combat Corner at a future combat event one day. So shout out to all my old friends at UFC. Send over the credentials. Um, all of my guys at Matchroom Boxing, send over the credentials. PBC Boxing, send over the credentials. Unfortunately, Paramount has shut down Showtime Sports, who was actually located in Coral Gables, by the way. And that sucks because they brought us some of the biggest fights from the last 25 years. And there's no more Showtime Sports. Which oh. Just Showtime box. By the way, I didn't mention the Bellator PFL super fight bullshit because that was an absolute fucking debacle. It was trash. 
It was trash. Bellator won every single fight, and yet they're the ones that got bought by PFL, yeah. except for the heavyweight fight, which was Ryan Bader, who's 400 years old. He's 40, and he's 6'2", and the guy that whooped, beat him was 6'8", 260, yeah. and he's at the end of his tooth. Like, that was embarrassing. Yeah, that that was, was just straight up trash. There was no, no reason to bring that up. Um, as we wrap up this episode of Come On Now, I've been super excited and grateful to all the feedback that we've been receiving. We want to send a special shout out to all the bright people who are supporting us. Our subscriptions are up. Um, all the advertisers that I've spoken to in the last few weeks. Uh, yesterday's price is not today's price. You guys need to <laughs> cut the check because we're <laughs> it's getting exciting over here as we introduce new segments. So. We are looking forward to future guests. We want to shout out to the Riot Comedy team. It's really fun that they are brothers, families doing it all together, and we'd love to have them on again. With that being said, these are the final notes and thoughts. Guys, is there anything that's on your chest, anything that you thought about this week that you want to talk about for cool, cool 60 seconds? And before we, we sign off, is there anything that's on your mind? I'll start. I'll start. Um. It's not a rant, and I'm not annoyed. It's more along the lines of the NFL salary cap has gone up, which means people are going to get paid more. What's upsetting to me is learning that uh, my beloved Minnesota Vikings are thinking of resigning Kirk Cousins and giving him more money. But we haven't given this gazelle slash unicorn, Justin Jefferson, the $32 million a year that he deserves. So. I just want to say to Vikings brass, ownership, upper management, don't make me call Joe. And when I say Joe, I mean Biden. <laughs> I'll call Joe and I'll shut that shit down. Because what you guys are doing is out of control. It's out of control. That's all I had to say. Go ahead, guys. You like that? You like that? I, I don't. I never did. Never did. But go, go, go ahead. Mm. Uh, I'm just going to go briefly about the Filipowski for the Duke and court storming in college basketball. Um, that was unfortunate, but you can't take that away from these kids, man. This is what's going down, man. This is their enjoyment. They're seeing people that they go to school with, and they're out there, and they're winning games, and it's a, you know, it's a shocker. It's an upset. They're running out there. They're having fun. Um, they can regulate a little bit differently where they can you know, let the players get off the court just a little bit of time, um, just because their, their safety is important. And like, like I said, if a, if a person, a fan ran in my face after I lost and he got too close, come on, I might floor him too. You know, I might have to catch him, you know. But in these situations, man, this college atmosphere, that would make it fun. That what we all enjoy. We love seeing the court getting stormed. We like seeing the goalposts get brought down. We like seeing kids. That would make college good, man. That's the atmosphere. Um, everybody goes there. They're a little lit. They're having a good time. Um, let these kids be kids, man. Let's just find a little bit better way for the safety portion of it. But other than that, man, don't take it away from these kids. Um, that moment is just a special moment, and they get to cherish it for the rest of their life. Um, that's what brings in all the money. Everybody's supporting it, and the boosters that pays Johnny Menzel $3 million to stay in college. But neither here nor there. Um, and meal deals that, that, that Saban ran away from that his team was paying all his players. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. We're talking about that another day. Uh. You know, fuck Duke, because I watched Filipowski actually go the opposite direction to make it a longer walk to the out. He could have gone up. Really? There was would, one second. He, he, they were on he, the court. He stuck his leg out to trip that person. He, and then he should. And he got hurt. So you know what? Karma's a bitch, like your T-shirt says. <laughs> Like, you know what? You stuck your leg out to trip somebody because you lost. You act like a punk. You know what? It fits the bill. That's how Duke players have been since Christian Leitner. Stomping on people's chests when they're on the ground. Fuck Duke. I cannot stand that program. I know it's, it's like LeBron. You love him or you hate him. Oh. And Duke, I'm a man. Fuck Duke. And you know what? He fits the bill of freaking J.J. Redick. And every schmuck that came out of Duke in the past. I'm sorry, that's not that was yours. That's not mine. Flage Johnson, LSU guard. I'm talking women's basketball. She said to Fox <laughs> News 
They were asking her about leaving to go to the WNBA. Luckily for her, she doesn't have to make that decision yet as she's only 20 years old and the rule for the WNBA is 22 years of age. However, she says <laughs> it was a trip. She basically said that um, why would it's like, why would I leave college to go play where you're not treated like a professional? <laughs> Because it's the only sports league in which go, you can go from college now and you take it down, <laughs> down in your salary. And that's what's happening right now with these women in college basketball. College women's basketball is a professional sport. The WNBA is the minor leagues. Yes. And why? Because they're getting paid like shit in the WM, WNBA. But you know what? It's their own goddamn fault. They can't market the league for crap. They're being subsidized by the NBA. And they've lost money every – they've lost $10 million on average every single year since the inception of the league. Any other business that loses that type of money on a year-to-year basis and makes no profit would have shut down. The only reason that league exists to this day at this point is because of the movements we have in this country and, and all this shit that goes on with we got to promote women's basketball. People don't care about the WNBA. You know who people care about right now? They care about Angel Reese. They care about – Caitlin Clark, they care about Flage Johnson, they care about Paige Bukers out of UConn, they care about Henley Von Lith out of LSU, was at Louisville before, they care about Juju Watkins out of USC. That is pro sports for women's college basketball. So when you, t- but the reality is, women's college basketball does not operate like a business. It operates because the big time schools can pay these people, these girls, because their football programs roll in money because LSU as a women's basketball program last year lost eight million dollars as a basketball program are you kidding but yet Angel Reese has an NIL valuation of 1.7 million Flage Johnson's at 1.1 million Caitlin Clark 910k Haley Cavender 868 Paige Buecher, 652, and Haley Violet, 563. Those are the top five for female women's basketball. You know what the highest salary is in the WNBA? $242,000. Erica Wheeler. You got about 10 girls, women that make about 200 grand, a little bit between 242 and 200 grand. And you're telling this girl who's making a fucking killing at LSU, who's making a million dollars. Yeah, you might want to turn. Oh, fuck, you're not turning pro. If I could stay here for the next decade, I would. Give me some more COVID <laughs> because I want to stay here till I'm 35. Oh. And and this is and and you know, kudos to Flage Johnson because Caitlin Clark has a decision to make now. Angel Reese has a decision to make. They're 22 years old. They can turn pro. Hey, no. In my opinion, both their assets should stay in school. Because they're going to make four to five times. Baby, got 242. Angel Reese will be collecting $2 million next year. Ten times? Eight times? Why the hell would I go? Why would I go back, go to the WNBA to go be treated like a freaking child flying commercially when I'm flying in charter jets right now? I'm staying in five-star hotels. And in the WNBA, I'm going to stay in the Holiday Inn Express with free breakfast. And that's a good hotel for them. Like, bruh, I, I, I was, I saw this today and, and it just made me, it just clicked in my brain because I'm just like, man, this is crazy. So let me ask you guys real quick before we go. Would you turn pro? Hell no. I was, I'm in college. I'm taking, I'm taking French class. I'm getting my master's degree. Oh yeah. I'm taking bullshit. I'm taking bullshit class. I'm taking French. I'm taking the art of picking flowers. I'm taking, <laughs> I'm taking culinary. I'm taking meal prep 101. I'm taking it. I'm taking PE again. I don't give a damn. Yeah, I think I'm leaving this this wonderful, masterful place that take care of me. No way. I'm still here, baby. I'm never leaving. I'm this never. is why these girls. This is why these women go play in other countries because to make that type of. I mean, it. But this is what NIL has created. It's created an environment where we're not in reality. We're paying. We're paying people at a certain level that they're never going to see in their profession. Whereas in every other sport, football, basketball, what you know, football, basketball primarily, they're going to get paid, men, men's basketball, their, their salaries will go way up, you know. But this goes back to the WNBA in terms of how they market. I mean, they're begging us to watch. They put together this Steph and Sabrina nonsense. You know what I was – I saw a post. And I'm not sure if this is correct or not. I don't think it's correct. 
But there was a post on our on our video with Sabrina and Steph where the person when someone said it was a digital court, so they changed the line. You just didn't know it. Oh. I don't know that to be true. I don't think that was true because they were reporting that it was the same line. But did you also see that there are actually reports now potentially moving the line back to make it like a 26-footer for three-pointer and getting rid of the corner three? In the NBA? Yeah. Oh, so they don't want to go with my idea. <laughs> they want to make it. They want to make guys shoot thirty footers for you know all day long. But you know what you'll do if you make it a 26, 27 foot shot? Those bums that can't shoot won't be shooting. Of course not. It changes the mid range. The mid range game will come back. It change, Of course, it definitely changed the game. But I not, think the corner three. I, I think you widen the court more but, and make it a long ass corner three. How, but how long do you let? How, yeah. how long? Is, how long do that last though? Eventually, everybody's gonna start shooting from further. But for right, we shoot from half court. But for right, for, 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 for right now, I guess it's a, you know, it's a little. They, they should make a, They should make the NBA court 125 feet. You got your damn mind. I never play that. I never play basketball again. We're not playing half court games. Come on, baby. We play half, well, court. half. Half court would be like 60 feet. No, we're playing half court game. Make it, take it, baby. New rules, baby. Make it, take it. That's all. That's all I got, man. Awesome. And everyone, yeah. thank you again. You know, like, subscribe, share it with your friends. We appreciate you. We broke 200. Come on now. Donald, take it away, man. Come on now. Uh, Let's so go. Thank you guys for tuning in. This was a fun one. Like I said, we had our first guest and we were super excited about that. So as we continue on to get more and more guests, we're going to have uh, the Adam Silvers of the world on this show. Not next week. <laughs> Don't quote me. But we're, we're building to that. We're building to <laughs> that. I, I, I would love to. Uh, you know what? I got next week's Don Dimes. I'm not even going to say it. I got next week's Dimes with that. Uh, with that being said, guys, thank you, guys. Uh, Rudy, please tell the family where they can subscribe and find us on Beyonce's <laughs> internet. Please let them know. Beyonce's <laughs> internet. So, of course, you can check us out on um, our, our videos are on YouTube as you're watching it right now. We can also get us on Spotify. Come on now, the podcast. Um, on Instagram, come on now, podcast. And on uh, TikTok, and we now have a Facebook page. Uh, TikTok, what's the other one? Tw uh, Twitter X, come on now pod, and on uh, Facebook, come on now the podcast. Awesome, let's guy. get it. You can get our videos on. We're posting everything everywhere, so you can see us everywhere. But please like, subscribe everywhere you go. Perfect, guys. Tuning in next week, we'll have another amazing show for you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's been a great one. Come on now.